Hi, Jason with Tormine. Let's talk prototyping. We are constantly developing new products. Being able to quickly build functional prototypes is valuable to any engineering or prototyping firm. While developing our servo kit to upgrade our M-series machines to our M+, I needed to make these little adapter plates to mount the cord restraints. Our engineering team handed me a print and asked for six parts as soon as I could get them. When working through a project like this, the first thing I always do is check out the print, run out to my stock bin and see what I have laying around that I can make the part out of. In this case, I had some 12 gauge A36 sheet metal. So I grabbed this, threw it on the plasma cutter and blanked out my 26 millimeter square parts. Then I just took these over, deburred them real quickly and we had it over to the 770M to put in the holes. To hold this part, I wanted to really be able to support it fully. Uh, on a part this thin, when you're drilling holes and stuff, if you don't have good support underneath the part, it, it can actually cause a lot of deflection for you. So I wanted to support it as much as possible underneath it. So I grabbed a set of old soft jaws, threw them in the machine, and we just manually cut some steps into them to hang on to this. So to make this part, we needed three different tools. We needed a drill, a thread mill, and an end mill. So I grabbed these tools, loaded them in some TTS holders, measured the tool offsets and loaded everything in the pad pile. From here, we just had to set the work offset. I set the origin on this at the center top of the part. So we used the Heimer real quick and we just jogged the machine around and got our zeros set. And then all we really needed to do from this point was create a couple of programs. When I work through a prototype like this, I like to run each tool path as I create it. In case I have a problem, then I'm just, it's fresh in my mind. And I just work through the process like that. So we just jumped in the conversation routines. I entered the hole positions into the drill table. I set our depths and some speeds and feeds. As you can see, we have a built-in speeds and feeds calculator that you can use if you need some recommendations. And we just generated the toolpath real quickly. So we have a 3.4 millimeter diameter drill on all four corners. So we went ahead and ran the drilling cycle. Everything worked out really well. The holes you know, it's a simple little drilling program. So we just, the holes went in successfully. We didn't ruin a drill bit or burn one out or anything. So everything just worked well. From here, we had to move to putting the center hole in. So for this, I actually used a thread milling routine. If you want specific information on how and why I chose a thread milling routine to create the hole, we actually have a video on how to create holes on your CNC. Check out our description below for a link to that video. So we went ahead and we worked through the thread milling cycle to create the hole. We roughed out the hole and we finished it all in one shot. Um, so we use that just to helically bore the center hole. From here, all we needed to do was thread mill the hole. So this was an M16 by 1.5 thread. We, again, we programmed this using the conversational routine. We just entered our values for our major and minor diameters and entered some speeds and feeds and generated the tool path. You can see on this, we had a little bit of chatter at first. I went a little bit too quickly. So we did make a couple little tweaks to get it dialed in and running nicely. And then we just grabbed a functional check. So this threaded hole is to mount a cord restraint too. So we just grabbed one of the cord restraints as a functional gauge to test fit it in the machine. We'd be able to bump out the diameters and stuff right in conversation if we needed to fit it, but this fit really nicely on our first try. So we had a quick functional check in the machine. Now we can pull it out and we can run another, you know, we have six parts total to make, so we have five more to work through. So I just used a ruler with a stop set on it to set and load additional parts and we're able to just cycle through all six of these components real quickly. So here they are, nice little simple part, real quick little thing to prototype out. Having this ability in-house and just be able to quickly knock out ideas and prove out concepts is just truly valuable when you're developing new products. So thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.